Greetings, blessings, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Welcome to our Tuesday night Bible class. Amen. Come on in. Who will be the first to come in? Amen. Who will be the first? Who will be the first? Come on in. Come on in. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Come in and say praise the Lord. Come in and say praise the Lord. Come in and say praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, Minister Elect. How are you? Amen. Good to have you join us this evening. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet, to meet you there, in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, to be glorious I do declare, bless you, Sister Nadine, and God's own Son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. Amen. If you know anybody going on YouTube, tell them we're not on the tube. We are only on Facebook. They got to get their face in the book tonight. Oh, there is going to be, God bless you, Sister Kathy. God bless you, my dear. A meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet, to meet you there in that home beyond the sky. Two more minutes. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. To be glorious, I do declare. And God's old sister Keisha, bless you, my dear, how are you? Will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. Praise God. Do me a favor, please, and share the link with someone. Let them know that we are live and well. Amen. If you can, please share the link. Amen. Tell somebody that you're on or maybe leave a comment. Sometimes when you comment, other people can see that you are watching Chosen. All right. We're going to begin shortly with a word of prayer. We have a lot to do tonight. We have a few books that we have to jump through. And we have a question from last week that we need to respond to. So uh, let me try and find that question. Amen. Amen. So we are live. Everybody join us. Amen. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Amen. All right. Let's pray together, everybody. No music tonight. No fanfare. We're just going to go straight into the word. I hope you're ready, you're fresh, you have your favorite brew, coffee, tea, Milo, Horlicks, Ovaltine, Bush tea, coffee tea, any kind of tea, Christy. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful and thankful tonight because you are God and without you, we are nothing. Thank you for giving us this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord God, for leading and guiding us and strengthening us. We pray tonight that as we go into the word of the Lord, that God, you will speak to our hearts. Lord, we to God. I pray that souls will be enlightened, enriched, edified tonight. Let your will and purpose be fulfilled in our lives as we give you the glory. Thank you today, Lord. Somebody celebrating today, birthday, anniversary, or uh, even commemorating, amen, a special event or occasion. Some are probably even grieving as they reminisce on the loss of a loved one. But we pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that you will strengthen, that you will keep by your grace and power that somebody will be strengthened. We pray for those who are not yet saved. We ask God in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will save them. God, you die that we might be forgiven. 
you died to make us good that we may go at last to heaven saved by your precious blood deliver tonight though know, somebody who's holding out holding out god i pray that every injuries every blockage god every decision that is holding them back i pray tonight that you reveal your glory and your love let your love be shed abroad in their hearts tonight by the holy ghost over to god thank you for what you're doing and what you have already done and for what you're going to do we give you thanks we pray for every preacher every pastor every bishop every man the woman of god we pray oh god that you'll meet their every need supply every need according to riches in glory i pray that they will not be ashamed in the name of jesus we give you glory and honor amen amen all right all right bless you brother rupert god bless you man good to see you all right well praise the lord god bless you everybody everybody praise the lord amen for those of you we haven't seen in a couple of weeks amen we will be seeing you god's willing this coming weekend praise god amen spread the word we will be worshiping the lord together amen not in the church building this time but we'll be at um lounge i forgot the rain treaty recreational complex 100 eagle street uh west and we will be in lounge number two join us there it's just a temporary stop amen until we get back on track god's willing trust in the lord to speak in the word of faith and trust in the lord to work amen things out we give god thanks for all of you who have joined us tonight please if you're just coming in say praise the lord and uh yes you know and uh share the link if you can amen or drop a comment so that those who follow you can see that you are online tonight all right so before we go any further amen i want to uh just uh, briefly respond to a question that somebody asked last week amen i can't find a question now but uh somebody was asking me last week where does it say uh i believe i don't want to misquote amen i need help here amen where does it say in the scripture that um yes somebody was asking where does it say in the scripture that a man must only have one wife <laughs> Woo, the brothers are pushing back all right anyhow um it's all over the work it's all over the scripture um i do know let me just go from the negative to the positive that let me start out by saying there are a few men in the bible in the bible that had more than one wife um one, uh, one of the famous brothers we have is david amen david had a lot of girls a lot of women uh and then his son had like uh, Solomon we're going to talk a little bit about Solomon tonight Solomon had like what 300 wives and 700 concubines that's a lot of women a lot of women uh, you know uh, Abraham had Sarah and Hagar um, don't know if Hagar was his wife maybe concubine you can call her um, Esther's husband uh, the king King um, Ahasuerus I think his name is um, he had, Esther was one of many wives that this king had. So as usual, when it comes on to the scripture, um, you can always find people uh, who would uh, look for those areas and say, you'll see the Bible says so. So I, I made a statement some years ago, um, and every now and then you got to say the same thing so that people who are just joining in, God bless you, if you're just joining, come on in, say praise the Lord. Uh, so we can know you're there. Uh, so usually when, when folks just join, you have to keep repeating stuff so that those who are just coming in um, can can know where you are and what you believe. So yes, the Bible is the Word of God. Every word in it is true. But not every word in the Bible was spoken by God. So the account of the Scripture is true. Also, I want to also mention that the Bible is a history book. God bless you, Sister Mary. Oh my goodness, how are you? God bless you. God bless you, Sister Elaine. Good to see you as well. God bless you in every area of your life too. God bless you, my dear. Thanks so much for praying for us. 
All right. So every every word of God is true. And the Bible is a history book. God bless you, Pastor Trudy. Good to see you. Greet your husband for me. Amen. Every word of God is true. And um, so there are certain things in history that we're not, we're not proud of. Um, but it's part of our history as well. All right. And so sometimes we we maintain certain monuments, certain statues, certain figures. I know I know the, the, the culture these days is to cancel stuff and destroy stuff. But sometimes you need to have some stuff around to remind people uh, where we're coming from. Uh, you will find this in the scripture, too. When 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 the Israelites were about to cross over Jordan, uh, the Lord spoke to Joshua and say, you know, uh, gather 12 stones and, you know, make an altar or some kind of marking with these 12 stones so that when your sons ask in the days to come, what meaneth these stones? You have some point of reference um, to tell them what the Lord did on the banks of Jordan. All right. So not everything, even though it's painful, there are some things, glory to God. Um, Sometimes God heals you, but leave you with a limp. I just got that word. You can be blessed, amen, but still limp. Uh, when, when, when the Lord, when Joshua, not Joshua, what's his name? Jacob. God bless you, my brother. Good to have you, brother Greg. I was trying to figure out how to reach you. Um, listen, this Sunday coming, everybody listening, this Sunday coming, we will be at the Ray 20 Complex. Praise the Lord in Lounge 2, where we used to be, just as temporary stopover. Amen. Until the Lord, amen, moves us back where he wants us to be. All right. So let's keep going. So sometimes what God does, he leaves you with something to, so that you can remember. Because, you know, we are humans and humans forget. <laughs> we forget. And so sometimes even when you're healed, God leaves you with a scar. Uh, Jacob wrestled with an angel. And, and, and even though he got blessed, he, was, he still limped. So that people will see his funny walking and ask, why are you walking so funny? Or funnily, if there's such a word. And um, that he would have something to talk about. To say, well, you know, this is what I got when I wrestled with God. You know? And uh, by the way, you can't wrestle with God and come out unscathed. Come on. You know, if you can wrestle with, with a man and walk away bruised or battered, you got to have something to show that, hey, <laughs> you wrestled with God. If you wrestled with God and came out smooth like a baby... Then you wonder, hey, did was that really a wrestle or was it really God? You know, you know. So sometimes God leaves. So there are some things in the Bible that we are not necessarily proud of, but it's there. It's an account of history. It's there. Um, there are certain instances where some people had slaves, and you know, people will, those who are not Christians will say, well, you know, yeah, the Bible is promoting slavery. It's not. It's it's just recording an account way back in antiquity, back in God, back in the day. These things happen. Um, imagine me going to the Middle East now and talk to Israelites, saying, you know, can you imagine me going to to Palestine or over in uh, west the the Middle East, telling people the land belongs to Israel? <laughs> I mean, I've been asking for trouble, but back in the day, you conquer. And you take territory. That's the way it was. That's the way it was. All right? And so there are some things that happen. So there are some men. I'm trying to answer a question uh, I was posed that was posed to me last week about where in the scripture it says a man should have one wife. So I'm taking a long way around. Um, and I'm talking about those men who had more than one wife. I mentioned David. I mentioned Abraham, Sarah, Hagar. I mentioned uh, Esther's husband. Um, and so on and so forth. But over in the New Testament, over in the New Testament, let's go to the book, y'all. We are on Facebook. Let's get to our face in the book. Over in the New Testament, the Bible says to avoid fornication. Come on, help me out here. Amen. Amen. Help me out here. Let me do my own little search. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Amen. Let's see. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse two. 
Amen. Let's try and find that first Corinthians chapter 7. I thought my stuff was working here. Amen. Thank you, Lady C. Amen. All right. First Corinthians. Oh, come back, come back. First Corinthians chapter number 7 and verse number 2. Forgive me, I'm holding my head down. You can see my bald spot. The Bible says, Now concerning the things about which you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, singular, and let every woman have her own husband. Amen? Uh, and then last week, while we were talking about uh, leadership qualifications, uh, over in Titus, Titus chapter number, uh, let's see if it's one or two, uh, Titus chapter one, it says, there is a say, I have one, may the husband be blameless, true of God, not self will, not soon angry. Verse number six, thank you. Titus chapter 1, verse number 6. Amen. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, one, one wife, one woman is enough. <laughs> one woman is enough. Let this, if you're going to be in leadership role, amen, the Bible says the man must be the husband of one wife. All right. Now you can stretch that any which way you want to stretch it. Some people will say, is it his current wife or is it the wife he used to have? Because some people have divorced and have gone through different life changes, right? I'll say it again, that when it comes on to marriage, God considers your marriage final. Amen. Your what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. So once you are married, you're married, okay? In in certain cultures, they don't talk about divorce. They, you know, you, nothing is working today. You go to bed and you wake up tomorrow morning and try again, all right? And uh, and I've heard from um, some of our, you know, older um, fathers and mothers in the church, back in the day, you know, you come from an island, the, the first thing they try to do is hook you up with somebody who is who is who is uh, who has papers in, in the country. And um, some of those people are still married today until death do they part, right? But but so so if you're married, you're married. You know, I understand sometimes things don't work, but, but try and make it work. Try and hang in there. Okay. All right. So I hope that is satisfactory. I gave you a couple of instances. I was very honest. I told you that there are some folks who had more than one. Um, and uh, even so, that was a culture of the day. But over here in the New Testament, you should be the husband of one wife. If you've got more than one, uh, one of them is not your wife. It's, a, it's an adulteress. <laughs> and you're an adulterer. All right? So make sure that and no adulterer and adulteress can go into the kingdom of heaven. All right? So you make sure you set your house in order where that is concerned. All right? Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now... Um, I'm not here to talk about relationship. Uh, I just feel maybe I, I, I can't just leave you open like that. When you do an operation and you cut somebody open, you have to try and close them back up. All right. So I do understand that sometimes life don't always work the way you planned it. Um, even in the kingdom of God, I've, I've often talked about uh, Acts chapter 13. And what might you talk about the will of God? Sometimes you don't know how God works. You think it's going to work this way and it works another way. All right. So, but uh, in Acts chapter 13, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work whereto I have called them. And um, a few chapters later on, they separated. Um, was it, was the work over or or did the enemy intervene and, and so on and so forth. If you allow me, uh, maybe not tonight, I, I have grounds to prove that perhaps Sarah and Abraham didn't make it all the way to the end, you know. Once Abraham got a taste of Hagar, you know, this dark girl from Egypt, 
uh, he couldn't go back to to Sarah. And even though he obeyed her and sent Agar away, he only gave her a bottle of water. She couldn't go far in that. So he was very smart in terms of how far he would allow her to go and, and so on and so forth. And I, there's a scripture that really fascinated me. Um, when, when Sarah died, the Bible said Abraham came to her funeral, which could suggest a number of things, you know. Uh, was she in a nursing home uh, where they're still together? Um, so, that, but so my point is, though, that not, you know, not every story ends happily, uh, but it is God's perfect will um, for things to work out. They, 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 some of you are listening to me right now. You you had a relationship. You're you're you've been single for years. You've been raising your children. Some of you, um, it's not a matter of infidelity or divorce. It's maybe somebody died. And uh, not every story has an happy. Let me just say, not every story has an happy, a happy ending. Ending, all right. Sometimes things happen, and um, no, that's why we have the Word of God to help us. And uh, sometimes God chooses us to be an example of tragedy, just to help somebody else. Uh, Ru um, Naomi lost her husband and her two sons. <laughs> all the men in her life. Um, was, was were taken away, but she held on to her faith. And what was it that that helped Ruth? It was Naomi's faith. And so, did God have to do all of that to Naomi just to help Ruth? We don't know. You see, God God's ways are not our ways. And for those of you who want to be used by God, He will choose how He wants to use you, right? And it may not be to your liking, but God is God. Amen. All right, so last week we were looking at Titus, and we've got, we've got a few books to go through tonight, not in depth, but as we you know, peruse the pages. So Titus chapter 1 was telling us about those who aspire to be leaders, and, and back in the day, there were only three leadership positions. Um, there were deacons, called to Acts chapter 6, there were uh, elders, and then there were bishops. These were the three ordained positions, all right? Uh, and the, in the church, and then there are what we call um, gifts, right? So gifts to the body of Christ. So um, not only do we talk about spiritual gifts, um, like in First Corinthians chapter twelve, uh, the Bible says there is word of wisdom. Like you have the oral gifts, word of uh, wisdom with knowledge and prophecy. Uh, you got the power gifts, you know, faith and and miracle working of miracles and and so on. Uh, but you can be a gift. God will give you as an individual, uh, your pastor, your your bishop, your Sunday school superintendent, your your elder, your minister. These are gifts to the body of Christ, right? So not only do you have spiritual gifts, but individuals are gifts to you. All right. So over in Ephesians chapter four, let's look at Ephesians. Uh, chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse number 11 praise the Lord Jesus Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 the Bible says and he gave some apostles all right so an, an apostle is a gift to the body all right uh, some prophets and he gave some evangelists and he gave some pastors and teachers as, as I said before um, in some churches, we talk about the fivefold ministries, apostles, uh, evangelists, uh, prophets, pastors, teachers. And in some circles, they call those four. They link the pastors and the teachers together because it didn't say some pastors and some teachers. It says some pastors and teachers. All right. So it depends on who, who you listen to. You know, uh, they mean the same thing. Um, so an apostle, of course. Um, as we talked about last week, is someone who we, we believe was an eyewitness to, to Christ. All right? So I know we have what we call apostles these days. In our, in our um, organization, we don't recognize, we don't ordain people as apostles. All right? Um, in other reformations, they do. You know, and a title is just a, a way of the way some groups organize. So don't let it get to you, you know, if somebody said they are an apostle, you know, uh, you know, whatever you you can choose what, what you want to call them, or, or if you want to respect them in terms of 
you know, that, that their organization, the Bible said, who are you to judge another man's servant, right? So if they were ordained an apostle, it take nothing off of you to, to say, well, apostle so-and-so and apostle so-and-so. But in our, you know, Pentecost and the service of the world, <clears throat> we, we don't ordain people as, a, as apostles. All right, so uh, an apostle, we believe, based on Acts chapter 1, uh, when they were trying to replace Judas, who had committed suicide, took his life, um, they said, you know, let's choose one of these men who were eyewitnesses that were with us from the baptism of John all the way up to, you know, so uh, let's choose one of them. So we believe. What about Apostle Paul? He said, well, Paul says uh, in one of his writings that he saw, he saw Christ, right? Uh, whether in the flesh, he doesn't know, so on and so forth. And remember when he was riding uh, to Damascus, he heard a voice and, and so on and so forth. So he had an encounter. Um, and, um, you know, many times you hear Paul had to defend his apostleship. So there are people who challenge him still, and um, he had to defend that. So when you, you can, if you close your eyes and, and listen to somebody read, you can tell whether it's Paul or not, because he always comes out um, defending, first of all, his writing and then comparing himself to the other apostles. He, he says, you know, I'm not behind any of them. I'm not less than any of them, whatever, and so on and so forth. So that's the Apostle Paul to you. All right. So there are other people in our church. We have ministers and elders and, you know, we have no deacons yet, but we're getting there. Amen. And, and so on and so forth. But we've got people who are gifts to the body. They are, they are called out. Um, and I, I do my best. Sometimes some people don't like certain titles. But you have to assign based on what you can see them do, all right? And a, a title doesn't make you, by the way. A title is just an acknowledgement of what we see you do, all right? So there are some people um, who we said, okay, we're evangelists. But as we see them grow, we realize that they are more useful uh, to minister to the body of Christ, to support the pastor in leadership roles. And, and so on and so forth. And there are those, the moment they get up, they're always trying to appeal to souls and so on and so forth. They, they, they have the work of an evangelist. All right? All right, so in chapter 1, that's what Titus talked about. Now in chapter 2, uh, right, so in Titus chapter 2, uh, Paul went on to encourage um, respect. He said, uh, no, no, Titus chapter 2, that's Timothy. Uh, excuse me. So Paul was encouraging those who are in ministry to make sure that every time you get up, there is some kind of uh, edification that goes on. Um, the best way to change a life, I remember when our congregation was, was really small and, um, you know, we want the church to grow. Don't you ever... If you are of the mindset that, you know, God has called a few of us and, you know, broad is a way that leads to destruction and, and, and only a few of us going, no. The, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were saved. When you walk around in your community or when there is an event or a game, you see all these people, when you go down to the subway and go to work on, on, on the weekdays, all those people you pass. Can you imagine... If the Lord were to come, if they're not saved, that's the number of people that would be going to hell. All right? And some of you, you need to you need to pick up a burden. You need to pick up a burden. When you go shopping, the amount of people you see in Walmart and supermarket, there are souls in your community that needs to be saved. All right? So don't just you just be comfortable with the 10 of you that gather on a Sunday morning. That's just to edify the body. All right? But you need to have a burden for the loss. Praise God. And so, so one of the ways, when our church was really, uh, congregation was really tiny, what I started to do, it was very awkward. Uh, but I, on a Sunday morning, I taught. You know, you go up there and you teach the word of God. Uh, and you're not, you're not hooping and hollering and, you know, but you're just up there and share so that people can be edified. Because as much as rebuking can get demons out of your way, but rebuking is like the wave of a sea. They go out, they come back. But one of the ways to make a, a, a permanent change is to teach the word of God. That the, 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 the Psalm 119 verse, Psalm 119 verse 11, I think. 
Let me find that for you. Amen. Psalm 119 verse 11. Amen. Psalm 119 verse 11. I'm trying to find it here. Thy word am I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. When you're trying to hide something, you don't just throw it and walk away. You 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 consider to to make sure it's not visible, easy or easily found. You you hide it. And so that's how you get God's word in you. That's how you change your life. And some of you just read the scripture and say, ah, it's a scripture. The only way you're going to change, you have to apply God's word to you, to your life. Right? When the word says don't steal, don't steal. We're going to talk about that a little bit from now. All right, so so Titus, Paul is admonishing Titus. He said, now when you when you get up to sleep, make sure that there is sound doctrine coming out your mouth. Doctrine is useful to the body of Christ. Just like how your doctors are good for your natural body. You go there for a checkup. He, he tells you, you know, cut back on this. Your blood pressure is too high. You need to take this three times a day and with water after you know. So you need to, you follow the doctors. And you don't just need the doctors. I'm saying, well, that's a good doctor, you know. Amen. Dr. Jones or Ben Johnson or whatever he is. You don't just go there and say, that's nice. I went to the doctor. That's it. You follow the prescription. Amen. You follow the instructions. You cut back on your carbs or you don't eat after a certain time or, or you know, you watch your, your this, you take your dietary things, whatever. Whatever instructions the doctors give you, you follow in order to improve your health. Whatever instructions the doctrine give you, you follow to improve your life. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so, Preachers, when you get up there, it's not a chance. It's not, you're not up there giving jokes and a nice story. Uh, even if nobody runs around the church, you make sure you are clear. And this is so important. I'm not only talking about the preachers, talking to the sound men and, 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 and church. Make sure you have good systems, good microphone, good, good, good PA system, good people on the boards. Make sure the mix is right. And, and man of God, make sure you're healthy so that the folks are not worried about your health. When you're up there, <gasps> they wonder if you're having an asthma attack or what. You know, make sure you're healthy because the word of God is vital. It needs to be heard and it needs to be clear. Praise God. That's how people are going to learn. Praise God. Jesus Jesus spent three years teaching his disciples. And, and, and look what where the gospel has reached because he took the time to put the word into them. Amen. Put the time, took the time, put the word in. So make sure you speak the things which become sound doctrine. My time is running away. Why? That the old men, the aged men, amen, uh, that, that the aged men be sober-minded, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and in love and in patience. Amen. When, when people get old and they get, they have one foot on the grave and the other foot on a banana peel. They are like, you know, they, they, they're very edgy. But you've got to, you know, make sure there is sound doctrine um, that everybody, the old, the people who are older than you and the people who are younger than you, they get something out of it. They learn something from it. Praise God. You're not trying to make brownie points and to try to be the best preacher in the house. Your job is edification. And I'm not only speaking to the pastors, praise God, or my fellow bishops, but I'm speaking also to those who assist the pastor in ministry. Ministers of the gospel, Sunday school teachers, praise God, exhorters, whenever opportunity comes your way, praise God. If people are going to change, they need information. Amen. Information is what people use to make decisions. Praise God. All right. Also, verse number three, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Amen. There's always some connotation about holiness when it comes down to women. Because women, I want you to know, you are royal. You are influential. Praise God. As much as the men are tough and they are in leadership roles, amen. Sometimes these decisions that men make are influenced by the women at home. <laughs> yes, man. I, I heard about this fight that went on. Many of you may have seen the clip. 
um, and somebody end up dying or going to prison or something like that over two crabs. And the fight all started because a woman went home to complain to her, her guy about something that happened, you know, between she and a, and a vendor. And so a lot of these wars that you see taking place, sometimes women are behind it. Uh, Jezebel spirit, who can influence uh, uh, Ahab to do two wicked things, you know, and uh, look how strong Samson was, but there was a stronger woman called Delilah that, that managed to get him weak. Uh, look how wise Solomon was, and still women got to him. Amen. Look how smart and military-minded David was, but he got weak. A woman got to him. <laughs> so no matter how wise you are, women, I want you to know that you are influential. Don't let the enemy cause you to make another man stumble. So whenever it comes out to women, there is all that we are picking on you ladies. It's just because you don't know how powerful you are. You look at any commercial out there. Amen. If they want to sell anything to men, they get women involved. They, I mean, I, I know nowadays they try to switch their own, but it's so silly. Amen. But but to, to, to buy a spark plug or, or a car or or anything masculine, a shaver, they got to have a woman there to say, ooh, ah, you know, to get the men to purchase. So women, you are influential. And so when men know that you have influence, they'll try to use you, try to use you to 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 get money and so uh, yeah i hear you lord acts chapter 16 there was this girl <clears throat> excuse me that young girl that had the spirit of divination that brought much gain to her to her handlers their pips by by divining by telling people their future right they didn't care about her when paul cast the devil out of her they were mad because the hope of their gain was gone they, they, they only were they were only, they were only concerned about money not her praise god so be very careful don't let people use you for the wrong reason okay all right there is no right reason to use you anyway but don't let them use you in that negative sense of the word all right so the woman must must uh, must be in behavior as becoming holiness holy something is holy is that which is set apart for god not just set apart it's set apart for god so a woman, amen, there is always a reminder where women are concerned to be, amen, in behavior as that which becomes holiness. Not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. Here, here's also another responsibility of the older women, that they may teach the younger women to be sober-minded, Amen. Uh, I know we have young people's department and so on, and then we have the, the women's department and the men's department. And, and so the young people are kind of left to themselves. You see where our young people are today. Praise God. Sometimes you need this interaction, this 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 communication between the, the, the generations so that you can influence. And I know things we don't, certain things we grew up with, they don't, you know, we don't do them today. The older people they don't know how to, to be on, on social media all day. Okay? They are home cooking or something like that. And the young people, you know, they don't they don't cook. Not everyone, you know, some people can, you know, help themselves and so on. But there needs to be a time I, I even suggested one time to to, you know, our our men's president, let's let's hang out at each other's home over the summer. And I know the summer just barely started, but but let's let's do something. Let's do some, you know. Some of our brothers can cook. You know, they are very handy in the kitchen. They, you know, their rice is rice. You know, others when they make rice it turns to porridge. You know, but uh, they, you know, they are brothers who can cook. Um, I, a brother made me a juice the other day. My God, you know, I said, man, you could sell this, man. You could make money off this. The juice was delicious, right? But if we can, if we can um, help each other and make it a fun day, you know, I show you what to do, so on and so forth. Some, you know, some people are afraid to fry eggs because the, you know, it's splash. They don't know how to crack it. They have to, you know, like, you know, little thing like that. If we can help, it's not all about praying and fasting. That's good, but there are some practical things that we can learn. And so, older women, get the young girls aside. 
Amen. Show them that, listen, you know, the, the, the market out there is not catering to Christianity. They're not going to put anything out there that is good for church. They, 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 all they're interested in marketing is that which shows more legs and more, more cleavage and so on. Show them how to make something for themselves. Show them how to, 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 to add a little thing, to accessorize and to... You know, no, listen, this is what, listen, when, when, this is scripture I'm talking now, when, when, uh, what's her name? When, when Naomi, remember I told you she lost her husband and her two sons, but, but God arranged so that she could mentor, uh, this, 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 uh, Midianitish girl called, called, uh, Ruth. Ruth was Midian. I mean, Ruth was from the, from a tribe that was very licentious and, 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 and flirty, you know? And uh, but 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 she came under the tutelage and the mentorship of an older woman who had gone through life and lost. And so when Ruth caught the eye of Boaz, and and Naomi realized that Boaz took a liking to Ruth, the Bible says that 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 Naomi called Ruth and said, "I said, girl, go get a shower, take a shower, put on some kush kush." Get some. Uh, let me find this. So you think it's joke I'm making? Um, help me out, dear lady. See, are you here? Let, let's find. Uh, let's go to uh, Ruth. Is it Ruth? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Ruth chapter. Ruth chapter. Ruth chapter number three. Praise God. And verse what? Verse verse one. Uh, when, uh, yeah, look at. Let's look from verse one. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, "My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? I'm gonna I'm gonna hook you up, girl. I'm gonna hook you up. Tell you what to do. That it may be well with thee. I want you to get a man. I want you to get a nice man. Now and now is not Boaz our kinsman, who's with whose maidens thou thou was? Behold, he winner it." Barley tonight in the threshing floor. They say, I know this man. I know what he's going to be doing tonight. Let me tell you what to do. Take a shower. Verse number three. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thyself. Make sure your hair is well done. Put that put thy raiment upon thee, dress of good, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have finished eating and drinking. When he's all full and so on, because if he's hungry, he's not going to pay attention to you. <laughs> when a man hungry, he's hungry. Amen. I'm just, I'm just telling that right. When a man is hungry, he's hungry. I don't care if you're naked. If he's hungry, all he wants is food. You remember when Esau was hungry, and he and he remembered his birthright. He said, "What is this?" <laughs> it's just, listen, you know that is why the enemy, the enemy will tempt you when you're hungry. Praise God. He came to Jesus after Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He said, if thou be the son of God. He knew he was the son of God. Amen. Command these stones to be made bread. Because he knew that when a man is hungry, nothing else matters. So Naomi says, listen, don't go with him when he's hungry. He's going, not going to pay attention to you. All that's on his mind is that jerk chicken with a few festivals. My God. I mean, that's why he's wearing his big heel boot and his bell foot pants. <laughs> Some of you don't know what I mean by that. Amen. That jerk chicken with the, with the festival and that tall, tall glass of whatever brew. He's not going to pay attention to you when he's hungry. But when he's full, when he's done, then that's a time you can reveal yourself to him. But notice what Naomi says. And some of you older women, you need to encourage these young girls. Girls, the more you show is the more they're going to want to see until you're walking naked. But if you want to be intriguing to a man, if you want to be a, a man attractive, cover up. It may sound counterintuitive, but that's how God works. Amen. The kingdom of God is different, and God knows what's best. I was watching this um, this 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 show on YouTube called Back to Eden. It's a gardening show. Yes, you know I'm into my gardening, and the the the, the narrator is a Christian guy, and um, his 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 apple trees and his grapes, they 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 have never they always bear bountiful every year. You know why? Because he prunes them. He prunes them to the point where people think, you're going to kill the tree. But he remembers the Bible in John 15, 
where it says, you know, that the, the tree cut it away that it may bring forth more abundantly. The more you cut a tree is the more it grows. Praise God. Another of you know mango tree. A mango tree, a mango tree uh, grows on neglect. If you water it too much, you're going to kill it. If you ignore it and, and butter it and, and so on, it will thrive. Amen. So this man was doing what the word says. In God's eyes, to go up, you go down. You humble yourself, you're going to be exalted. You exalt yourself, you're going down. So God always goes in the opposite direction of culture, of what people think is the norm. So, so ladies, if you want to be seen, cover up. Cover up, man. You know, cause, arose somebody, somebody's curiosity. You know, make them want to say, what are you hiding? Praise God. But the more you show, is the more they're going to want to see. And and you're not you're not Aki from Linston Market. You're not you're not advertising anything. You're you're trying to save yourself. So so young ladies, older ladies, this is your opportunity. Amen. Don't say you have nothing to do in the church. You have a responsibility to mentor the younger girls. Call them aside and say, Come here, darling, come here. And while you're talking to them, you fix them, say, Hey, you know, these young boys you know, they, 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 they think your eyes are down here, you know, so you have to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, praise God. All right, now let me keep going. All right, so uh, back in Titus, the job, uh, one of the roles of the older woman is to help the younger woman. Now, watch this. I'm going to go from here quickly to another book. Um, Titus went on to further to say, uh, look at verse number four. He said, Teach the young women. No, verse 5. Uh, this is what you're going to teach the young women. That they be sober-minded to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Amen. Obedient to their own husbands. Those of you who've got unsaved husbands, your, your pastor is not your husband. Please make sure that you uh, do what you're required to do at home. Praise God. If the church is on fasting, make sure you discuss it with your spouse. Um, the Bible talks about that too, that the enemy don't come between you, right? You can't say, no, no business tonight. I'm on fasting. <laughs> your husband is not in the church. And, uh, and that is why it's important to make sure you are married to a saved man. Praise God. Don't be unequally yoked. Praise the Lord. I know sometimes, especially nowadays, the line is blurred and get more blurry. Amen. There's a difference between denominations sometimes and people cross the line and so on. You are Adventist this man, and the man is a uh, uh, church of God of prophecy. So, so you go to church on Saturday when the markets are open and then on Sunday when everybody closed, you, have no, you, know, you can't buy any food and it causes a problem. You can't sit down to have meals together um, and so on and so forth. There's going to be a difference in doctrine. You think he's saved or not saved and he thinks you're not saved. And the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So it is all. It is very important that you think about these things. All right. Now, I said your husband is not saved because two things can happen. Either the man backslide when after you get married to a saved man or maybe you got saved. Uh, while you were married out there in the world. All right, so be, be conscious of that and work with what you've got uh, and be an example in the home. Praise God. All right. Verse number six. He said, young man, I'm in Titus. God bless you, Sister Marcia. Thanks for joining us. Amen. Kingdom life is in the house, y'all. All right, so here, here we go. Verse number six. He said, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. So now, this responsibility is on the, the Titus. Paul is talking to Titus. He said, I want you to preach some doctrine that the old men be sober and so on and so forth. And that the, the older women also, that they be uh, adapt a behavior that becomes holiness and that they teach the young girls and so on. But Paul, Paul also continues. He said, you must also speak to exhort the young men to be sober-minded. Amen. Be sober. Sober-minded brothers, be sober, be, be, be aware of what you are and who you are and, and conscious about your life. Don't just be, you know, when somebody is not sober, they're, they're, they're intoxicated. They, 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 don't, they can't control themselves. But God says you need to be sober. 
Amen. And Paul continued, he said, in all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works. We ought to be examples. On, on Father's Day, we didn't, we didn't uh, live stream the service, but on Father's Day, I was uh, doing my best to show uh, what a pattern is like. Um, and over in, in Genesis, uh, one of the ways that, that Jacob increased the, the inventory of his flocks was by uh, showing them a pattern while they they procreate and and as they do so they they reproduce the pattern that they saw and so uh, we as men or Christians we need to be a pattern of good works and 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 from the word pattern we get the word paternity uh, we we think stem from our lives so men you have a responsibility to be a good example praise god it is not just because you are a man and your voice is deep you know and and all that kind of stuff and and you know you're the head of the house no you have to be an example you gotta be an example of patience and strength at the same time of 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 weakness before god one of the things about david um as 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 military minded and as 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 articulate as he was he wasn't afraid to get weak before god david was good at confession and repentance <laughs> you know he was strong for everybody else but when it comes to god he was weak he wasn't afraid to say created me a clean heart and and throw himself before god and weep all night and so on and so forth he knew his limits and he knew how to respect god so as as men be examples of before your family and in the church uh be a good example of of righteousness and holiness of love and of patience because your your children are watching amen you may not realize it but they're you know you know your people are watching you and i've said it before somebody told me this this is not original if you feel like you're nobody's watching you just mess up <laughs> if you ever mess up one day you'll be surprised how many people come out the woodwork to say how disappointed they were and they had high hopes for you and they can't believe you would do this, that, and I even one day, where were you all along? Nobody, I didn't know you guys even saw me. Praise God, but people are watching, okay? All right, so that's Titus. Amen, it's 827, I got a few more minutes. Let me run off from Titus. When, when we left Titus, I believe we went to Hosea. And uh, so we're talking about relationships earlier. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope I didn't miss any questions. Let me just do a little scroll here to see if I miss any question. Anybody, did I say hello and how they do and praise the Lord? All right, good, good. All right, so Hosea, Hosea is in the Old Testament. It's a prophet. Amen. This man of God is a prophet. Again, God uses things in the Bible, uh, sometimes not to our liking, but 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 God knows how to reach the people He wants to reach, and He's a master soul winner. So what the Lord did was use Hosea's life as an example to Israel. God used one man's life an example. Now uh, Hosea was was told by God. Hosea was told by God to go marry a daughter of Hordom. That's a nice way of saying. Uh, Mara prostitute. Amen. God told the man of God, this holy man of God, amen, to go and marry a prostitute. Now, some of you will say, well, I don't know about that. Is the, 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 the Lord, did the Lord, are you sure? Yeah, you know, well, a few things. Number one, he didn't say go support a prostitute. He said marry. All right, so so you married this woman uh, who was from that particular lifestyle. Um, and there are a lot of us to, in the church today that, uh, don't get me preaching now, but there are a lot of us in the church today that are X things. Some of us are not too X yet, but we're working on it, <laughs> you know. But we are X this, X that, X that. So it was hoped that uh, Gomer, her name is Gomer, she wasn't a homer, but <laughs> Gomer um, was supposed to be an ex-prostitute from that trade. 
but but she kept going back and 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 uh, the prophet kept going back for her and, and so on and out of that's what I'm gonna say all of that was to show the um, the Israelites how God views them having brought them out you know they keep falling back into sin and God God ignored them for a time but because he's a God of love glory to God he keeps going back I don't know who I'm talking to out there you can testify that uh, you know from the day you got saved you haven't been saved Amen. No, not everybody can say I've been saved from the day I got saved. Some of us, some of us, dip and fall back. You know, you know, we dip and fall back. We, you know, we are we 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 we. Some of us, some people spent a long time out there and came back in. Amen. Praise God. Had their children out there and and, and came back in and now they are solid. They are secure. They are not going anywhere now. Devil can huff and puff and whatnot. They are rooted. And there are others who dip and fall and and some people don't know. You know, some people were able to to backslide in church. Come on now, and and nobody knows because they were in church every Sunday, but they weren't living right. Praise God! I'm telling you, it's dangerous. So 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 Hagar, sorry, um, um, Hosea was told to marry this woman, and of the daughters. And my God, it's a tough call. You know, I'm thankful that. That there are certain ways God don't use me, but God used Hosea, and uh, all the children that were born from the union. I think they had one son or two sons and a daughter. First son was Jezreel, and of course his name meant something else. Uh, the first girl uh, was uh, Lo or Lo 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 Hama, I think her name was, and uh, and then the third child was a boy called Lo Ami, I think his name was. All right, so so that's Hosea for you. It's a tough call, and of course we can debate it from now until thy kingdom come, did God. Uh, is there anybody out there that, uh, you know, may have run into somebody that did something untoward and, and they, the person feel that God told him to do it? You know, I, I heard a funny story about this man uh, who, who told a pastor that the Lord told him to, to run into the wall. And the pastor stood back and said, Brother, if the Lord told you, go right on ahead. <laughs> he ran into the wall, and while he fell on his back, and the stars were circling around his head like in the cartoons, uh, he said, The Lord just told me, Don't do that again. <laughs> but there are some people who do silly things, absolutely silly things, and then try to pin it on God. And there are some things that look really, really awful. That God is a part of. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I mean, who can know the mind of God? There are some things about God that, that you don't know. You probably won't get it. It looks silly. Um, it looks bad. But but sometimes God has a way. Sometimes God has a way of working through some terrible situations. I mean, can you imagine Mary, the mother of Christ, um, saying to Joseph, um, I'm pregnant, but it's God. You know, Joseph in his Jamaican accent would say, hey, I take man for you, yeah. <laughs> where you take, where you take man for? <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, God had to speak to Joseph in a dream and say, you know what, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You know, not everything that God does looks good. Oh, I just, I just, I just got some preacher angry, amen. Because if it's God, it must be toasted right, the bread, you know, it must, it must be evenly buttered and everything. God does all things well. There are some things that God does that doesn't look good on the outside, but we'll understand it better by and by. And so this prophet man of God was in that kind of a situation where the Lord told him. The Lord told him. To go marry this this girl who was of the daughters of whoredom and she kept going back she kept going god bless you elder elder hey amen amen god bless you sir she kept going back and it was trouble but the lord was in it ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna say something i just felt impressed to say that that every not everything that god's in amen looks smooth but it will work out Amen. Sometimes uh, you know, the, the presence of God does not mean the absence of trouble. 
Amen. Glory to God. The presence of God does not mean the absence of trouble. And the, the, the absence of trouble does not always mean the presence of God. I know in His presence there is fullness of joy. But sometimes, sometimes you have more trouble when God is around because the enemy is always trying to come. And if God isn't there, crazy. when you look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ, amen, all of the, the things that those people did, I mean, the people in that genealogy were not all so sober and righteous. Praise God. In there you will find, you find Hagar in there. You find Rahab in there. She was a harlot too. Praise God. But she got converted. She trusted the spies and ended up marrying one of them. Um, you know, and so so God can bring people out. We are royal preachers. We have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are called out people. Praise. That's what the church means. The, 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 the Greek word for the what we call church the, the English word is church. The Greek word is ek, uh, ek, ek, what's the word, love? Yeah. Ekklesia or something like that. Ecclesia. All right, it means we are called out. The called out ones. Praise God, we are called out. All right, so that's Hosea for you. Now, we left from Hosea. It looked like we we're talking about relationships tonight. Amen. So those of you, amen, who are looking into relationships, amen. Praise God. It, 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 it's, it's a good night to join us. Amen. Amen. Sister Daniel, good to see you. Praise God. Thanks for joining us tonight. Praise God. It, she says it all boils down to do your trust in God's plan for you. Do you trust in God's plan for your life? Praise God. That's a good point. So sometimes you have to ignore public opinion and just know what the Lord says to you. Praise God. And if the Lord is working with you, that's the best you can do. Praise God. All right. So we moved on to we moved on to Songs of Solomon. Now now this is this is kinda this is I'm going to uh P, it's kinda PG rated here, but we're gonna do our best to get through a few of these verses. Um so there are three books that 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 Solomon wrote and then he also contributed to a number of the Psalms. So Solomon wrote a few of the Psalms in the book of Psalms. And um, and he also, but he wrote three books, Amen. Songs of Solomon, Proverbs, and the Book of Ecclesiastes. All right. So um, it is felt, and I and I, I agree. I this is my opinion that the the first of the three books written was Songs of Solomon. It's a it's a love story, um, and the second one was Proverbs. He's given instructions to his sons. And uh, the last one is Ecclesiastic. After all of his uh, of, of life experience, he looked back and said, all is vanity. So we're going to talk about Songs of Solomon briefly, and we don't have a lot of time. But Songs of Solomon is not necessarily written by Solomon. It is songs about Solomon, uh, songs of Solomon. So it is felt that this, this, this book was written by one of his admirers or some of his admirers. They were collections of 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 how they view this 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 lover boy called Sol Solomon. All right, so Solomon had some aroma about him that he he was the hot throb. No wonder he had so many wives. Not only was he smart, he was good looking. Amen. So so here we go. Amen. Here we go. Now this is in the Bible, y'all. So it's a love story. Uh, which is also telling us that we're not all spiritual. There is, There are things about us in the scripture, and God is concerned about every area of your life. God is concerned about your love life. Don't tell me that what goes on to the bedroom is just in you nobody's know, business. There's something, it's in the word of God. Amen. So not everything that, that you see on television, you should do. I'm just, you know, let me just say this out there. Amen. Now, don't follow what you read in certain, certain magazines. It's not for the Christians. Praise God. Because they will lead you into doing things that, that doesn't please God. And everything we do in word or deed... <laughs> We must do to the glory of God. All right. So here we go. Let's talk about songs. These are songs of Solomon. Amen. Look at verse number one. The song of songs, which is Solomon's. Okay. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. This is some some young lady dreaming, amen, about a relationship with this beautiful guy. For thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of, of good ointments, thy name is like ointment poured forth 
Therefore, do the virgins love thee? All right. So um, this is God bless you, Sister Vinnie. Thanks for joining. So this is important that we understand. Um, love is important, and I'm glad it's in the scripture because um, the scripture helps us. If if there is no direction from the Word of God then then people would be left to do what they want to do and i'm grateful that the bible talks about romance that the bible talks about sex uh what kind of sex is acceptable and what is not acceptable amen leviticus tells us amen uh the combinations that are right and the combinations that are wrong it's always right um between a male and a female not always right it's it's right between a male and a female it's never right between two uh, people of the same gender that's the Bible is against that it's not right between humans and animals amen and even if it's opposite sex that when it comes on to close families the Bible talks against that um, you know you know father with daughters and and mothers with sons or or, or father or sons with their with their father's wives that kind of stuff those things are forbidden the Bible talks about those things right so if the Bible doesn't address it then people can you know will, they are free to say well you know I can do what I want but the scripture talks about it and, and you know it, it's not always it's not this is not Sunday morning sermon you know and and how often do we do this in Bible class but but in order to add clarity and, and guidance the scripture is there and right there in the book look at my Bible Songs of Solomon is right there in the middle almost right it's important that we address these things so there is romance in in scripture praise God those of you who are who are who are whose parents are in ministry you didn't just drop from the sky <laughs> there there is romance involved and so there are there are some lyrics here for weddings and and, and life where this you know people are talking about love and, and so on and so forth um you know here look at verse number 12 while the king sitteth at the, at his table my spite not send it forth the fragrance thereof a bundle of myrrh is my well beloved unto me he shall lie all night between my breasts <laughs> that's that's scripture right my beloved is unto me as a cluster of uh, uh, flowers in the vineyards of Engedi. All right. So, so these are these are not cheap stuff. This is not kush kush. <laughs> these are these are myrrh. When Jesus was born, they brought you know incense, frankincense, um, myrrh, and so on. These are valuable stuff. And so, whoever is dreaming of a date with Solomon is putting these songs together, these lyrics together, because they would like him in, in their life, right? They are they are admiring him. And and ladies and gentlemen, if I just spiritualize a little bit, this is one of the ways. Just like how somebody is dreaming of a time with with Solomon, so we 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 long for a time with God. It's, I think in Psalm forty two it says, "My soul." Uh, long for the old law when should I appear before God you know so you, you know when you know you want somebody how you look at their photos every night and you dream and you daydream um, it's it's good to know you know it's good to long after God like that as a matter of fact if I could just turn it around don't you know that God desires you like that in Psalm 8 the Bible said what is man that the world mindful of him it's like God gets up every morning like how can I get that person interested in me you know, how can I get them? I'm going to make sure that it rains today so their garden looks good. I'm going to send the rain. I'm going to open doors. I'm going to bless them. Amen. So that they can bless me. Praise God. So so God does stuff for us. The, the love we have for God is reciprocal. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. Praise God. So it's so this is this is good. Um, uh, I want you to see. I'm running out of time here, but I want us. To, let's go to chapter number, chapter number five. This is this is this is a good evangelistic point. Um, I could I could close on. He says, "I am come into my garden, my sister." So now that you have said these four, ver four these first four chapters of love to me, no, I'm responding, right? So you know, sometimes we flirt with God. Let me just. I'm going to close on this, but. Sometimes we flirt with God and waste his time. You know, we have this elaborate praise and worship service and the anointing comes in and when the anointing comes in, we cut it. Like, 
what, what's the use? You know, we have, you know, we've, we've done our best to seek him and blow my name and just cut it. You know, sometimes we just need to entertain the presence of God. And, and I'm not saying that those who are running the service should take it over and do what they want to do. You have a pastor. So, but it's good if pastors and those who are in charge are would be sensitive sometimes. And sit down. You can preach next week if the Lord lets you. Right? Uh, so, but here we go. So after having flirted with the, 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 the Solomon for four chapters, chapter five says, the man is responding now. He said, I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh my friend. Drink he, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. So now, so so now, having you've reached out and say, oh, whatever you're gonna do, and so here comes the beloved. Now he comes knocking. Amen, amen. I, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, "Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled." For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with drops of the night. I put off my coat. How should I put it on? So when the when the door knocks, the person on the inside says, Nah, too late. Not gonna respond. I have put off my coat. How can I put it on? I have washed my feet. I'm not gonna dirty up my feet again. I'm not gonna defile them. So guess what happened? My beloved put his hand to the door, to the latch of the door, and my heart was moved. But he was walking away. Watch this. So I arose up to open my to my beloved, and my hands dripped with the myrrh that was on his hand, and my fingers with the sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. I'm going to close there. Amen. How many of you have flirted with God? You call him, Lord, help me, this, that, that, and the other. And when the Lord shows up, he said, ah, I don't have the energy. I'm not going to get up to pray. I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to give my heart to the Lord today. I know the Lord delivered me when I was in that car accident and saved me when I was in the hospital. Uh, but right now, um, I'm too busy. But when you get good and ready and say, okay, all right, I'm going to do it now. He's not there. He's not there. The Bible says you have to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he's near. Salvation is a time-sensitive proposition. Salvation is a time-sensitive proposition. You don't just get saved when you're ready. You have to get saved when the opportunity is there. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Amen. When a sale is on, you can't say, well, I'm not going to buy today. I'll go, I'll go next week. No, you go on to the store when the sale is on. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to close there. Praise God. Amen. For those of you who are with us tonight, I hope you learned something. Amen. Amen. I hope you learned something. I hope you're blessed. Amen. We got somebody here. Clinton is asking for help. Praise God. So on and so forth. Amen. Not a question there, but yeah. Okay. Amen. So uh, for those of you who joined us tonight, I hope you learn something. I hope you are strengthened. I hope you are edified. And I pray that the Lord will bless you as you continue, praise God, in his word. Now, we are in the book of Proverbs. We started on July 1st. The Proverbs has 31 chapters, I think. And uh, there's a chapter a day. So today being the 4th of July, we should be on chapter number 4. Praise God. Amen. So please make sure you follow along. If you didn't catch up on there, you can start today at chapter 4. That's fine. Just make sure you keep up because next week we will be jumping right into the book of Proverbs so that we can keep on track. Listen, our time is up. We are out of time, but we are not out of word. And we are hoping and trusting that if the Lord tarries and our life is spared, that you will be back with us on next Tuesday as we continue our walk through the scriptures. God bless you, one and all. For those of you who don't know, I'm telling you again, this coming Sunday, amen, the 9th of July, 
we will be having service at lounge number two at the Ray Trinity Complex, 100 Eagle Street West in New Market. Praise God. Please plan to join us. We're going to have a time of prayer and worship and the word. Amen. Come for the worship. Amen. Come for the, uh, what's he called? Huh? <laughs> Come for the worship. Amen. Stay for the word and leave blessed. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Tomorrow, Wednesday evening, we be in a time of prayer. I've lived long enough. We used to have a, a season of prayer. We used to have an hour of prayer. Now we have a time of prayer. <laughs> so please come and join us. Amen. Tomorrow evening at 8. Amen. On the prayer line. Our information is on our website. www.chosengeneration.ca Amen. Check us out. Join us. It's open to one and all. Join us for a time of prayer. And may the Lord bless you real good. Our service on Sunday begins at 11.30. Amen. You don't want to miss it. Praise God. We're going to have a time in the Lord. Listen, greet somebody in Jesus' name. We're about to go. But before we do, I've got one more thing to tell you. That we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. That you may show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Grace and peace, y'all. Take care and see you next time. God bless.